100 million years ago, a huge portion of North America was covered by a body of water called the Western Interior Seaway. It stretched from the Gulf of Mexico, through the Great Plains and Central Canada, all the way to the Arctic Ocean. Its shallow waters were home to some of the most terrifying marine animals ever to swim the oceans. This Cretaceous Gulf was relatively unknown to modern man until the past 200 years. Slowly, odd finds were made. Fossils of fish found where no water had ever been known to exist. Rare soil that proved to be some of the most fertile on Earth and in a place that receives very little annual rainfall. And weird land formations in the middle of nowhere that could not be explained. As paleontologists and geologists began to put the puzzle pieces together, an amazing picture came into view. The conclusion that at one point in time, a grand ocean gulf once covered the middle of North America and then disappeared, never to be seen again. After years of study, scientists now know that this body of water, caused by immense forces of Mother Nature, left its footprints behind when it finally disappeared around 66 million years ago. Now, we examine the evidence. When did the Western Interior Seaway exist? And just where was it? This week, we'll travel over 500 miles to explore some of the rarest rock formations on Earth in search of evidence of what amounted to a North American ocean. Come with us as we go walking on water. Welcome to the eastern coastline of the Western Interior Seaway, as it would have likely appeared around 80 million years ago near present-day Fayetteville, Arkansas. This grand ocean gulf once dominated the center of North America during the Cretaceous. It was home to an abundance of ancient sea life, also known by names such as the Cretaceous Seaway, the Niobrarian Sea, and the North American Inland Sea, this body of water was the habitat of numerous marine species, such as 18 meter long mosasaurs, ichthyosaurs, and plesiosaurs. Massive mega sharks swam freely throughout as they hunted for their next meal. Standing at only 600 feet deep in most areas, this gulf was relatively shallow when compared to ocean depths. However, when it disappeared between 35 million years ago and 30 million years ago, it left its emphatic mark on the landscape that today makes up the North American continent. But what, if anything, is left today that actually proves that this seaway once covered the center of North America? After doing some research, I've decided to take a trip. My first stop will be in South Dakota at a famous location called the Badlands. Badlands National Park is made up of 242,756 acres of preserved land. When Native Americans called this place home, they themselves made some interesting finds. The Lakota natives found fossilized bones, seashells, and turtle shells. Well before modern paleontology arrived on the scene, these native people correctly gathered that this unusual land was once covered by water that no longer occupied this space. This is our first physical evidence of the existence of the Western Interior Seaway. The Badlands themselves were in fact formed in part by the sea and its eventual recession. Inside the dense layers that make up the Badlands is a geologic formation called the Pierre Shell. Today the Pierre Shell is home to modern commercial oil deposits and even natural gas. These natural fuel resources are the telltale sign for what we are looking for on our journey. You see, the Pierre Shell is made up of ancient marine deposits. When the Western Interior Seaway existed, the animals that lived in its waters, just like all living creatures, eventually died. As their bodies sank to the sea floor 
and were covered by dirt and other dead creatures. They compacted together to create this heavy fuel-ridden layer of what we call shale. Sometimes fossils are found throughout the Pierre shale, but its existence alone is proof enough of what was at one time an ecological powerhouse of marine life. But the story of the Pierre shale is just one part of the puzzle of how the Badlands were formed. Welcome to the Badlands. This unique formation in South Dakota actually began to form about 80 million years ago when the Western Interior Sea laid down the Pierre shale. Then about 35 million years ago, the Western Interior Sea began to recede. After it disappeared, rivers and streams from the Black Hills brought sand, mud, and gravel and laid those down on top of the Pierre shale. Then volcanic ash poured on top of all that sand, mud, and gravel from the Rocky Mountains, which were volcanically active at the time. Then, after millions of years of erosion, we're left with this, the Badlands. The Badlands that we see today were created when the Western Interior Seaway receded. It would have been in the central western portion of the seaway. So we found our first piece of concrete evidence of the Western Interior Seaway, no pun intended, but what other land formations could be left today that lend evidence of the once large Niobrarian Gulf? While on my journey in South Dakota, I was informed that I might want to look a bit further south for similar formations. The next leg of this trip will take us through Nebraska and on to Kansas. As we travel back south and east, it's important to know that the route we are taking is the same route millions of American settlers took to settle the west. Just backwards, that is. In Nebraska, while traveling east, we run into a huge rock plateau that just rises out of the earth with nothing really around it. Rock formations like this begin to show themselves slowly. The land here is part of the Great Plains. To many settlers, landmarks such as this would have been used as modern road signs saying, yes, this is the way to the west, turn left or turn right. Just inside the western border of Nebraska, is perhaps the most famous of these unusual landmarks, a place called Chimney Rock. Named obviously for its chimney shape, this rock was in fact formed in a similar manner to the Badlands, although it was not created by massive swift rapids as the seaway receded. No, Chimney Rock was formed like the Badlands in that its many millions of layers were placed over time, but its modern shape comes from millions of years of windswept erosion. At one time, it was part of a plateau cliff. However, when it broke away, the chimney was formed due to the hard sandstone near its top. Erosion is still beating away at Chimney Rock, and in all likelihood, it will one day cease to exist. Our next stop is in Kansas we're headed for a place known as Monument Rocks. Unlike Chimney Rocks, it isn't quite as famous. That's in part because it's so difficult to find. It's about 20 minutes off the interstate and is just about as far from civilization as you can get in Kansas. To find Monument Rocks is a bit tricky. It really just sits in the middle of a field but is hidden by several small hills. As we approach the site, it looks rather small, that is until you realize it's still pretty far away. In truth, Monument Rocks is fairly massive. It's a place that is entirely unique, and honestly, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Nowhere in North America will you find a site that can compare. It's so large, so isolated, and when you're there, you're most of the time totally alone. It is a National Historic Landmark, but there are no park rangers. You won't find any interpreters. You're just free to roam this magnificent place. I've traveled a lot, and this place was weird. It was almost like being at Wrigley Field with no one else around, except for the cows, that is. Standing at heights up to 70 feet tall, this rare rock formation was formed again 
in the same manner as both the Badlands and Chimney Rock, but its history of erosion resembles that of Chimney Rock. It stands around 500 miles south and east of the Badlands of South Dakota, but its truly unique factor is that it is so alone, so out there, so isolated. Monument Rocks is also made up of chalk. Chalk is the type of soil that makes up many of the large rock formations of the Great Plains. Chalk formations and chalk soil are a staple of Kansas geography and geology. This chalk was formed much in the same way as the Pierre Shale. Millions of millions of years of compacting Dead Sea creatures and soil deposits fell to the bottom of the ocean floor and finally created the chalk. Oftentimes, these chalk layers contain great fossilized remains of the animals that once lived in the western interior sea. We've traveled over 500 miles and discovered that the western interior seaway left behind rare rock formations and mineral deposits as clues to its existence. But what clues still await to be discovered? What remains of the marine life that called this place home? And what did the Western Hemisphere actually look like when North America was partially covered by water? Next week on Walking on Water, we hit the books in search of some of the largest and most fierce creatures ever to swim the oceans. We'll follow the trail of some of the most famous explorers in American history to rediscover one of their great fossil finds to better understand just what life was like in North America 80 million years ago. That's next Monday at 7 p.m. Central, only on Fossil HD.